beautiful beaters, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and welcome to the Beach Dunes earrings tutorial. These earrings were 100% inspired by the Beach Dunes collection by Eureka Crystal Beads. They come out with monthly collections and I will leave the link to that down below. Of course, you can pick up each of those items separately if you want in a whole variety of different colors, which they also have. So I have another example here in the black and gray and silver color tones. And today we're gonna to be making the other earring that goes with this pair in the beautiful shades of aquas and sea foams. I will leave the links to all the products that I'm using today down below the video, as well as a link to a blog post with the specific number of contents and color names. What we wanna do first is string a beading needle. We're going to need about four to five feet of beading thread to make the two earrings today. And I suggest using the six pound fire line as well as a size 10 beading needle. So go ahead and thread your needle if you're beading along with me today and let's get started. All right, so the first beads we're gonna be using today are the Storm Duos and the four millimeter fire polish. And I have lined up the Storm Duos kind of in the order in which they're gonna be strung. We want to have pairs of Storm Duos with these little points facing each other when we string them on. And then the other holes that are left open, you can see how these points are kind of facing apart from each other. So that might help to get started. And we're also gonna be using some of our 15-0 seed beads. So we're gonna start by stringing on a fire polish, one of our Storm Duos, a 15-0, another Storm Duo, and make sure that these Storm Duos have their little points there facing each other. And we're gonna be repeating this sequence four times. So I'm gonna pull this down, leaving a, about a four to six inch tail that we'll be weaving back in later. And we'll repeat those beads. So a four millimeter fire polish, a Storm Duo, a 15 and a Storm Duo, and repeat. Fire Polish, Storm Duo, 15 Storm Duo. My needle's getting a little full, so I'm gonna pull this down. And we are almost done with this step. We have one more sequence to go. Fire Polish, Storm Duo, 15 our final storm duo, and we can pull these down and take a look and make sure everything's going in the right direction. And that looks good. So now what we wanna do is we wanna join all these beads together in a loop. They're going to form the center of our earring, just as we can see on this example here. And then we will start working out from there. So take your needle and swing back around and sew through all those beads that you just added. And you can go a few at a time if you can't get through all of those beads at once and just hang on to your tail thread so your beads don't come off if you're not using a stop bead. So I'm just gonna continue all the way around through all the beads that we added. And then you want to pass a little bit further than that as well to complete your loop. So I'm back to where I started and I'm also actually gonna go through the next fire polish and the next storm duo and that's gonna place us where we wanna be coming out anyway. So I'm pulling this nice and tight and this is what we have so far. And now I don't always do this, but I'm going to be making a half hitch knot right in this spot where the Storm Duo and the 15 are meeting. So let's just do that. And that's going to keep this ring in place, but not tighten it too much to where we're gonna lose any flexibility that we have. So I'm just making one little knot right there. And then we are ready to step up to the outer hole of our Storm Duo and we are going to move on with our next layer. And we also need some other beads. We need our six millimeter bicones, we need our three millimeter bicones, and we need to bring in some 11-0 seed beads. So we can do that, and we're gonna fill in some of these gaps. First of all, we wanna pick up an 11-0, and then a six millimeter bicone and an 11-0. And then we're gonna go through the next storm duo that we get to through that outer hole. Then we want to insert a three millimeter bicone in between this pair of storm duos. So let's pick one up and go through the next storm duo. And we're gonna repeat this all the way around. So again, 11-0, six millimeter, 
11-0, go through the next storm duo. Then a three millimeter bicone and go through the next storm duo. Gonna turn it a little bit, that's what we have so far. And then an 11-0, a six millimeter and an 11-0 through our next storm duo a three millimeter bicone through the next storm duo. And we're on our last section. So 11 six millimeter, 11 through the storm duo. And finally, a three millimeter. And we're gonna go through this next storm duo as well as the next 11 and then we're gonna pull this nice and tight. And you can see when we do that, it actually starts to raise the center ring just a little bit, which is perfect. And now we're ready to work on the back. So let's flip it over and we're gonna be working with our 15 O's and our 11 O's. So we're currently coming out of this 11 O right here. We wanna pick up four of our 15 O's and then one 11 O and four more 15 O's just like that. And then you're gonna sew through the next 11-0 that's on the other side of that six millimeter as well as the Storm Duo, the three millimeter bicone, the next Storm Duo, and the following 11-0 seed bead. That's gonna position you in place to repeat what we just did. So there's the beads we just added. They're gonna end up wrapping around the back of our stone and let's insert another group of those. So pick up four of your 15 OC beads, one 11 O and four more 15 O's. With those on your needle, you can pull those down and we're gonna go through the 11 0 on the other side of that six millimeter, as well as the storm duo, the three millimeter, the next storm duo, and the next 11 0. And now just repeat this step two more times. And we have one more to go. All right, and this time we're gonna go through the 11-0 and through the Storm Duo, through the three millimeter, through the Storm Duo. And we're also gonna go up through the 11-0 and the four 15 O's that we get to and the next 11 O so that we get to the top of that first peak. And we're gonna start sewing our peaks together. Now, before we do that, I'm actually gonna pop a needle on the tail thread and I'm gonna weave that back in just to get it out of the way for the video. You're welcome to do that now or wait till the end, but let's meet back in just a moment. All right, that's better. Now we're ready to sew these peaks together. So still coming out of that 11-0 there at the top of this one. And we're gonna pick up three 11-0s and then sew through the 11-0 that is on the tippy top of that next peak that we made. And we don't need to pull this really tight yet. We're still gonna insert the stone, but we're just getting our beads in place and then we'll cinch it all up. So I'm picking up another three 11-0s and then going through that very top 11-0 once again and repeating that all the way around, three 11-0s through the peak 11-0. And finally, three more 11-0s and just gonna cross right through that next 11-0 there at the peak. And again, just leaving this kind of open so that we can take our stone and we can insert that right in the middle of the earring and I have it face down. 
and we want these flat edges of the cushion cut stone to be parallel with the six millimeter bicone. So have it sitting in place just like that. And I usually just rest my finger there while I pull and I'm pulling that center ring. So that's what we have. And we're gonna bead around this center ring to secure our stone in place. So I'm gonna continue through the next three seed beads that we had just added. And I'm only gonna sew through the groups of three, so I'm gonna skip over those peak 11-0 seed beads. That's just gonna cinch up this grouping back here even a little bit tighter. And I'm going through that fourth grouping there, and we're gonna wanna go through this back loop of seed beads at least twice to make sure that this stone is secure on the back and not going to slip out on us. So just continue going around those beads. Until you've gone around at least twice. And if it's moving around a little bit right now, that's okay. We're actually gonna cinch up the front a little bit more. So we still have that to go. Now I'm coming out of this grouping of three seed beads right here. I actually wanna make my way up here to attach the wire guard over the top of the six millimeter. I'm gonna go through the 11 0 the four 15 0s So through those first, and then through that 11 0 there that's right on the side of the bicone. And now we're ready to attach our wire guard right above that. So we're going to pick up four 15 O's. We're going to go through one side of our wire guard and pull this down. Then go through the other side of the wire guard. Placing the thread in the groove and then pick up four more 15 O's. And go down that 11-0 as well as the four 15-0s on the other side. Go through whatever you can at first. When you pull that, it pops the wire guard into place there over top of the six millimeter bicone. And we wanna go through this grouping of beads again at least one more time, if not twice, to make sure that section is tight and secure. So I'm just traveling back up through the wire guard again and down the other side. And through those four seed beads. And you can even go around all of those one more time. At this point, I want us to make our way to the front of the piece. I'm gonna continue to follow the thread path. I'm going down the 11-0, the four 15-0s, through that 11 0, just trying to get my needle to go in the right direction, following our thread path, going out through that 11 0 and out through that first storm duo that we get to and pull. And now I want to step down. I want to go through that inner hole of the storm duo and I'm just going to pop that thread in there and you won't really see it once the piece is completed. But we're going to be adding some seed beads around each of these four millimeters, which is also going to end up cinching this up some more on the front, which it needs. So we're going to pick up two of our 15 O's, one 11 O and two 15 O's. And then we're going to go through the next storm duo that we get to and the next 15 O and the next storm duo to position ourselves to do that again. So you can see we added the five seed beads right here, which are wrapping around the fire polish, and we are in position to do it again. So pick up two 15 O's, one 11 O and two 15 O's, and go through the next storm duo and the next 15 O. I find that those are about all I can get through at this point. And then go through the next storm duo and keep pulling as you go. You want this to cinch up around the stone and we're ready to do it again. Two 15 O's, one 11 O and two 15 O's and through the next storm duo. 
and the next 15 0 and the next storm duo and we'll put on our last grouping two 15 0s one 11 0 and two 15 0s through the storm duo through the 15 0 through the storm duo and i'm going through the next 15 0 as well that's what my needle's letting me do at the moment and we're gonna pull this nice and tight. And you can see now we do have all of our beads in place. Isn't this a gorgeous color combination? And now what I'd recommend you do is go through all of those beads again in that center ring to really secure this around the stone. And then you can even go around this ring where the fire polish are sitting to tighten that up even more. So continue sewing around your piece a little bit at a time. And then my suggestion is to follow your thread path and make your way to the back of your piece and tie and knot off your thread back here. It's always nice to try to do that just to be sure you're hiding your thread and you're not really well. But that is all there is to making these Beach Dunes earrings. All we have left to do is pop on our ear wire after that and then we can admire our work. All right, guys, so as you can see, I have popped on my ear wire and that does it for this tutorial. So I hope this was fun for you and easy to follow. Please feel free to leave me a comment right down below the video. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial, if you gave it a try, what colors you decided to go with, anything else you'd like to say. I hope you'll stick with me for more fun beaded jewelry tutorials just like this one. Until next time, I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your day. And as always, Happy beating. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. For more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can check out the information section below this video for links to all my social media handles, recommended products, and my shop and blog at orchidandopal.com. Thanks for watching.